Welcome to the American Made and Paid Show, the home of free speech and independent thought. The big story is freedom of speech is really in trouble. The far left knows that at any time they can call for a sponsor boycott of anyone they despise. It is right here, right now, where you'll get your weekly dose of unfiltered truth. It's non-negotiable. Pre-existing conditions will be protected. This president has said this as a candidate. Insight. Very few people I know could have handled it. We can never, ever let this happen to another president again. An information that challenges the American way of life. But I do want to jump into something else, if you don't mind, and actually ask yeah, go you for it. a little bit more about, because we can shift gears here after this uh, first thing. I think that that was a good way to kind of look at libertarianism, at least from the teachings of Jesus and everything. And it's like, we, we inevitably always keep coming back to the Bible, because <laughs> it's it just the, it's the word of truth and all of that. But um, I think ideally, one thing that I've always wanted to explore a little bit more, right, is that, is the aspect of like, how does... How does like a family also aid and and help when it comes to just the overall well-being of people? Because you talk about, this is an interesting thing because you were a solo guy for a long time. So we can talk about this more in a colloquial manner. But obviously there's anti-male sentiment, which we talked about last week. And, <laughs> yeah, there and is. I would not yeah. be, an, uh, I would not be for typical marriage as it pertains to the world unless I was, it was like a godly woman and I was building something with her and building a family. Right. Cause that, that is something that I, I agree with, but you told, you said something earlier about how black people have abandoned their faith and yep. I guess it's parallel also with their families. Right. So we've talked about fatherlessness and everything, but what's the importance of family? What does that allow an individual to do and to grow onto from maybe more of the atheist standpoint and why are atheists so anti-family and that's what i want to talk about like why are they so rejecting of that well because i mean ah, you hate to say things like this but well, i i honestly don't know because we can't speak for everybody but just from what i've seen you know my friends and all this other stuff it's all about us like guys who are atheists they don't want to get married because or they enter them you know a marriage where they can do all that weird threesome, sh you know, stuff and, and, and swinger. Oh, the Emery and swinging. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, but you know what, though? But the thing is, the smart atheists, they always make money doing that. Like, I had a, I had a friend. His name was, like, literally his name was Six. Uh, and uh, Six used to, uh, man, man, oh, man, he made a boatload of money. <laughs> I mean, a boatload of money doing it. And, uh, and that was the yeah. whole thing, like, you know, and he's old, he has no kids and, and, you know, he's old and he looks old and, and, you know, and he's still in his mind, like, oh, I can get all these hot people and da, 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 da. But, you know, that's the thing. It's like, once you get old, you know, that it's just, yeah, it's just not the same, you know, and, and uh, you know, people don't look at you the same way, even people your own age don't lust after you the same way they used to in their 20s and 30s right and, uh so you know six is yeah his way to make money is gone i mean and he was real successful too because he had uh he was like like one of the dudes from liquid latex and stuff like that <laughs> really yeah, yeah that was his whole get down and yeah he was featured on tv you know a lot of these TV shows like oh liquid latex and oh da 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 da. So I, I wanted to ask you about this because this segment I want to talk about like progressivism and anti-family or whatever it may be relationships. Why is it that you know this right? But I've started. I, people always told me about this like older folks, but I've noticed that a lot of women who were like very very staunchly independent wanted to be career women or lady bosses, however you want to call it. When it hit a certain point, they have what what I call baby rabies, where they just want to get knocked up. They just want to get pregnant <laughs> and have a kid. Like, I think I don't know if the counselor like went through something rabies. similar, funny. but it, it's funny, right? Baby rabies, but it's just like they just like want to get knocked up. Like, is that a real thing? What's your experience with that, and well, why I is mean, that the case? No, but the thing is like this. Uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of people they do it just for the money. Because it's guaranteed child support or it's guaranteed welfare. I mean, 
you hate to paint the brush, but come on, on the streets, that's just how it goes. No, like, I'm talking about not just the streets. I'm talking about like regular, somewhat affluent women that just like they do well in their careers. Yeah, but how old are they? Eh, approaching 30, if not past that. Okay, so that's the biological clock ticking. Yeah. And uh, that's just the reality uh, of women. Like women have that need. Cause it's just how it goes. It's okay. So like, does something just fire off in their brains or do they no, no, realize no, this, that their ovaries are just no, drying no, no, up? Check like, this out. So when a woman orgasms, she orgasms for quite a long time. Like the length should be like a minute or, or longer. It should be longer. Okay. Uh, I see. And a lot of people are like, what? A minute? Like, yeah, because women how's orgasm. It? Yeah, but how is this relevant to kids? Oh, no. Okay, so check this out. A man, when he orgasms, it's only for seconds, like three seconds. Yeah. That, it's three, five seconds max. Well, a woman honestly feels an orgasm for three, I'm not three, uh, one to three minutes. It's minutes. So, and there's a reason for that. A biological reason for the long orgasms is to make that woman stay still, lie down, so she can get impregnated. That's the whole point because of the shape of the... Okay, so like if you look at a cow's vagina, that cow's vagina... How do you know all this random stuff? No, it's not random. This is physiology. No, I know, I know, I know. I'm just saying <laughs> random because it, it would be random if it was coming from my mouth. That's, that's no, 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 no. <laughs> anyway, so okay, so the... <laughs> in a cow, the vagina is, you know, horizontal, right? So yeah. when the cow's standing up, you know, the semen can stay there and the cow can be impregnated standing up. All animals are like that. But what makes humans unique, and this and th this is so bizarre, like this makes me also question, like, God, what if there is a God? And that's why God made this. Because you got to ask, why is this genetic anomaly only with humans? We didn't that, evolve from monkeys. Yeah, monkeys could, uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, I believe monkeys also have the vertical. Yeah. Uh, oh, I just get confused with horizontal and vertical. Horizontal is this way, vertical is this <laughs> yeah, way. You know, with hor I, I, I'm almost positive monkeys have uh, the horizontal ones, right? But humans have a vertical vagina that goes up and down. So if they're standing up, the semen just drops right out. And uh, the likelihood of getting impregnated lessens. So with the longer orgasm, the female, the human female has the urge to lie down longer. So just through sex, they have that urge to just be impregnated. That's what the long orgasms are for. But then a lot of women now so it, are, it just like relaxes them so that biologically they. Oh, they then, okay. So chemically, okay. So that's the, that's the why, but the biological, uh, what's happening biologically is a lot of these, you know, I don't want to say like love chemicals in the brain are triggered. Endorphins. Yeah, well, but it's more than just endorphins. There, there's a lot more hormones going on because a lot of people say it's just, no, but it's more than just endorphins. There's, there's like about a, ah, man, at least 50 to 60 different type of hormones to make that person feel loved. And, okay. uh, and that's what they're feeling when they're orgasming. <laughs> it's just how it goes, as silly as it sounds. But there's all <laughs> these hormones and, like you said, the endorphins and everything working that makes that feeling of love and then you just like the woman could relax she's enjoying it those minutes and you know maybe she's maybe maybe not she's gonna get pregnant so uh a <laughs> lot of that urge of wanting to get pregnant literally comes from having sex and and, and if she's getting it done right but if i can't imagine a woman feeling that way if she's getting gang banged you know what i mean it's just because the psychological, uh, you know, just, just, just the scenario, like what can she, what's she thinking? Yeah. You know what I mean? With this input, that input, like I'd be afraid something might rip or something. I don't know. But you, you know, so, you know, why do women want to have 
babies because they're biologically built to have babies. Even their own organ. It's like a woman can rationalize all she wants. I don't want to have kids. You know, I want to be a boss and make money to be a strong, independent woman. And- no, but a lot of women, a lot of women just simply say, I don't want to get fat and wreck my body. Yeah. A lot of them will say that. They're, they're yeah, I, I was literally just talking to a girl who her only reason for not wanting to have kids was she didn't want to upset her figure. She didn't want to look. But yeah. I'm like, by the time you're 40, that's not going to matter. Cause yeah, I mean, I'm sorry. I hate to say that, but once you're post wall, I mean, there's not much you can do. <laughs> like just, no, but it's the truth. I mean, it's, it's just a sad reality. Like, it's, I, mean, I, I mean, I just, I hate to bring her into this, but come on. The, the, I mean, like with women who, get pregnant and i'm not mentioning anyone specific here and have kids right it's like once you get to a certain point at that age it's like it's harder it's just harder to lose weight i mean it's the same with men it's like when you're 40 and 50 i can be done but you can't expect that that body is gonna maintain itself forever and if you're just like well look at sharon stone look at gwyneth paltrow look at madonna i'm just like yeah it's called botox <laughs> yeah no it's true surgery you ever heard of that? no I'm, i say that to people i'm like you ever heard of a tummy tuck there is absolutely no way sharon stone looks that good at how old is she 60 dang well she's like <laughs> I, i'm getting off track but what i'm trying to say is that's un, that's not real they're old but they have to look that way because they're celebrities but it's okay for the body to take a dive into the deep end <laughs> past yeah the- point it just happens that's right but and that's the thing people don't get it they really don't and and that's yeah it's amazing like barbara streisand is 80 she looks like like look okay look up a picture of bar i i like barbara streisand but look up a picture of barbara streisand she's at least 70 or 80 years old i i I don't think that that's real I don't think that that's something that, oh, she just aged real gracefully. You, you kidding me? You think Streisand aged gracefully? I'm not saying this to take a pot shot at Barbara Streisand, but people need to not artificially induce their brains into thinking that that's how most people age. Like when you're 80, it's like, dude, why do you need to look? I'm sorry, but if you're 80, you're old. Like you need to, you need to look 80. Like I hate to say it, but it's true. I don't yeah. know if you're looking, but it's like, you know what I mean? Like, how does, how does Streisand look like that at 70, 80 years old? You know, but anyways, that, that's just my take on it is I, what I wanted to bring it back to was women just get this urge of wanting to have kids like in their late twenties, early thirties. It's like a, a switch. Like one day they're like strong, independent women. It's like, I'm a lady boss. I'm going to run for Congress or what some which I don't know if is a good idea, (laughs) but like, you know, and then the next minute they're like, no, I want to be pregnant and barefoot and have a man. Well, but, but, but it, uh, I'm telling you what's crazy is, uh, this, this is what's super, super, super crazy is that their own sexuality, their own sexual behavior betrays them and makes them want to have babies. It's just how it works because while men don't feel love through sex the way women do, because again, you got to remember a male orgasm is only three seconds, four seconds. And the female orgasms a minute, three minutes, you know, it it could be, it's super long and some women are multiples, whatever, but that's neither here nor there. My point is this. Yeah, I don't want to get too graphic. This is a family show. (laughs) When a woman is having sex, she honestly can feel love where men can't. And that's why I always say a man shows his love by the money he spends on you. It's just how it works. If a man genuinely is trying to take care of you, build something with you, that's his way of showing love. Men are not... They're not built for affection the same way women are. Women, you know, why do women love cuddling? Because they're orgasming. They want to lie down. They want. They don't want to be alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? They want to be held. They want to be cuddled. It's it's an amazing thing. But but then that's why men just fall asleep. <laughs> Because no, but it's, it's a weird thing. Men don't feel nothing but sleepiness, you know. It's like, oh, and that's what they do. And uh, and and 
and yeah, it, it's a it's an amazing thing. That's like you know, it's amazing how like it's it's just too perfect. It, it's like this whole how we're made. Yeah, it's just it's a perfect perfect system. That's why there's seven billion of us and not seven billion monkeys. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just it's how we made. It's it's amazing. There is no other animal on this planet that there's seven billion of. You know what I mean? There's seven <laughs> yeah, that's, billion people on this planet, despite all the abortions, despite all the murders. There are seven billion people alive on this planet today because how we have sex. It's amazing. No other animal can make that claim. Not penguins, <laughs> you know, maybe termites. But you know what I mean? Like insects are not animals, but, um, but, you know, we need insects in the billions. Why? Because they have to, you know, we need their poop for to grow plants. Crops. Yeah. They fertilize. And yeah. The ground. I mean, they use. decompose a lot of stuff that and that's their job. You know what I mean? <laughs> Seriously. You know, like my friends literally raise worms and other insects. Oh, or, earthworms and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all kind of, they make like tons of money doing it too. It's it's not they're not broke, <laughs> you, you know. They're you know I don't want to say multimillionaires, but they're multimillionaires from growing worms and crickets and things like that. It's amazing, but it's amazing thing like that stuff was literally named in the Bible. You know what I mean? Like in in the first book in Genesis, it says you know about the tripping things and stuff like that what yeah. all the animals that creep insane. along the floor and it, no but it's insane like no but it's insane like seriously i know people who make millions of dollars doing all those things that are described in the bible whether it's because i know a lot of people don't like this but you know we literally take there's you know processes that we can do that literally just takes the elements right from the air, you know, and we can make, you know, dry ice or, or pure oxygen, you know, all kinds of stuff that we do, nitric oxide, you know, we can take it from the air literally and make laughing gas. And uh, I know a lot of people who do things like that. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's just a weird coincidence how it's all listed in the Bible. And we figured out how to make money doing it. But those who do don't even believe in the Bible. You know, I'm, I was one of those, one of those dudes, but I'm thinking, nah, man, like, you know what? There's so much stuff in here. Like we could do almost anything and control. No, but you know, like that movie book of Eli, you know, the oh, whole, come on. You can't believe in that. No, no, no. But see, but the, the philosophy behind that movie is brilliant because it was about, you know, Denzel Washington's character is protecting the Bible, trying to take it to a library and trying to keep it away from the hands of a guy like me who would take the Bible and use it to rule the world. So that's what I do. Like, you know, sir, I'm that type of guy like who would use the Bible and use everything in it and keep it for myself and make everybody to my slave. That book can enslave people. It can teach you how to enslave people or it can teach you how to be generous or kind depending on who you are. See, I'm right. the type of person who would use it for evil. I know I would because I'm that kind of guy. Seriously, because yeah. like I would have. That's why I know I would never be a good leader because, you know, like I, for some reason, I have a soft spot for retards and mentally ill people like real schizophrenics. Because, dude, I know. Sure. I've seen it. You know what I mean? Like this dude went to Berkeley. He was going to graduate and all of a sudden, like, because he was, okay, so the most... Uh, high functioning and you know successful schizophrenics are the ones who are paranoid schiz paranoid schizophrenia. The most successful and, ones, you said. Yeah, they can go through like university, like you know, you can graduate at the university at 22, 19, 20, 21. Oh, okay, yeah. So you know, so this guy when he became a full blown paranoid schizophrenic, he was twenty three, and he was one year away from graduating from Berkeley. <sighs> You know what I mean? Can you imagine that? Getting into UC Berkeley just to have it all thrown away because you're a paranoid schizophrenic. And uh, he just, I'm telling you, he saw the TVs or heard the radio. He just thought those wires in his head and he was trying to pull those wires out. And, and just, you know, that it's a terrible thing to go through and to witness. 
And, uh, you know, so I, I, I feel for guys like that. It's like, fuck, why, why? You know what I mean? But then now at my age of almost 50, I get it. We're supposed to take it. It's a test. If Jesus is real, it's a test. How we take care of these people is a test to see if we honestly deserve to have any knowledge at all. Because with this advanced technology, because, you, know, like you know, like I told you before, you know, we were involved in a bronchial scope that shoots out radiation, uh, you know, microwaves and, right. and all these, you know, for anyway, it doesn't matter. So if we know how to do something like that and yeah, what the hell, you know, my boy sold it for $300 million, <laughs> that yeah. tech, 300 million. That's what he got. That's not bad. You know what I mean? That is, a huge chunk of change. That's a lot like of money. Who wanted, you know, a trillion dollars to make something on the moon. That's unrealistic. I told him, dude, just get 50. Who cares if the people are going to make billions off of it? It doesn't matter. Right. You know, it, it's, it's, see, and anyway, agreed, man, agreed. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But I was talking about this from a family perspective about reproduction. Well, yeah, so let me get back to this, right? Yeah. So, because education is real key to all of this. Yeah, of so, course. So the thing is like this. When you have no family, and, and this is a very sad thing, when you have no family, there will be no innovation. There will be no advancements. There is no, nah, I hate to say this, but when there's no family, there is no connection to God. There is no, there is, you're not ever going to feel tested at all. See, because I, now that I'm old, I realize all the tests right. that are set for all of humanity. Sure. And that, those tests would be how to take care of one another. How do you get ready to take care of other people? Well, that's through having families. Seriously, you learn how to take care of the retarded, the mentally ill. When like you have your own. own. When you children. have your own. That's but the guess key. What? Thank you. That's no, but guess what? We live in a society now where we don't give a fuck about anybody. So we don't want kids. These people don't want kids now. People your age don't want families. I they do. I mean, I, I, I want kids. Well, yeah, you like, do. I want like but, 10 of them now. Nah. But yeah, no, dude, I'm telling you now, you want 10 kids. I'll tell you why. Because when you have- a, gonna have an army. They're going to be great. Yeah, exactly. They are your army. They yeah. are your representative. I'm going to teach them how to be so good at making money and helping people that it's just going to be- No, but not just helping people, but- your family can honestly, like Trump's family, as broken as that family might be, but that family is intact. And what it does, it sets policies for an entire society. And if you are strong rooted like that, look at the McCain family. Look at the Rothschilds or the Walton. No, no, no but I want to, I want to go with to like, like, cause I honestly believe like Trump could be a, like an example of a Christian family without knowing the Bible too much because his family's intact. He's doing the right things, even though his, you know, like Trump is troubled, but look at where he's at now. Now yeah. let's look at somebody who pretends to be a Christian, the McCain family out of Arizona. Come on. That is some evil, evil dude. But look at McCain. He was a guy who crashed his plane on the thing. I mean, look, he got captured this and that fine. But what else did he do? Well, he wrecked his plane, almost killed a ton of people on that ship that he was serving on. He was last of his class. You know, a lot, he wasn't like this golden boy, whatever. And now look at his, yeah. his daughter, the apple from his tree. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. oh, this, oh, that. She can't articulate why abortion's bad. She can't articulate that abortion is just, uh, a kinder, gentler way of saying killing. You know what I mean? So she is bad for our society. And that's the thing. Like you could have a, just having a family doesn't mean anything. It's just like me having the Bible. I know I guarantee you I'd be one of them evil dudes banging every broad using the word to get me women and money and, and, and not helping anybody but myself and maybe my immediate family. So, you know, 
I don't know. Maybe not because I'm thinking, I don't want you to be evil like me. Go get, make your own money. Figure it out yourself. But anyway, but that's the thing. Or you could like, but if you have a strong, big family and you teach them how to be good the same way you were taught how to, and well, I don't know how you were taught, but I'm assuming you were taught how to be good, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and you know, I, I don't know why you don't have more siblings, but when you have more siblings, you can do more things. The eldest will be that leader. And, and then, you know, because of the age difference, stuff like that, the eldest child should take the reins of your mantle and do well and do good, just like the Rothschilds, just like the Walton family. Seriously. I don't believe in that. And, that, and that's the thing is like our country is falling apart. Right? No, there's that's examples. Different. Think about this. Hold no, on. No, I know, I know, but I, go ahead, go ahead. No, Sorry, no, no, no. but think about these examples of great, great family people yeah. who honestly, and you can honestly say there are good examples of the Christian faith. Look at the Walton family, Sam Walton and all his kids. Look at the good. And there's a lot of those kids. If Sam Walton only had one kid, that kid would be the richest man on the planet. But he had like, what, eight kids, nine kids? And yeah. all the Waltons do good. They are good examples of Christian leaders who should be running the country. And in theory, they kind of do run the country through lobbyist groups. But, you know, they're politicians. But anyway, and those are examples of good Christian families you can serve as that person, as a young person. That's why you wanting a bunch of kids is the right way to go. Mm -hmm. Now, look at evil families. We already said the McCain's. Right. They're false. I think that's more dangerous than a person like the Clintons because look at the Clintons. They only have one kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they have that's one kid for a reason. Like, yeah. yeah, come on. You Progressives, know I mean? man. No, but once that kid is gone, that's it. But anyway. No but, more Clintons. That's it. Yeah. But, but the Clinton family is not as dangerous as the McCain family, who is a false, you know, oh, yeah, we're a crawfish, Christian faith, blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, 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 that Christian faith is not real because they're not making any money. They are takers upon takers upon takers, and they do no good for the weakest of our you know, society, the ones that we are tested to, to in theory, serve. You know, Walmart literally hires retards. They'll have <laughs> retarded people as their greeters. They will. Yeah. It's not just a bunch of old people. They'll have the mentally ill guy there. Oh, hi. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, that's a, and you talk to like a normal person. You try to treat them with dignity or whatever. And you know what I mean? That's what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And that's what family is all about. We lost that as a society and we only have the progressive right to blame for this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and other fake Christians like Pete. Buter speaking, of, speaking of Christians, this just reminded me of a funny thought because like John 3, 16 is like one of the most famous, probably the most important verse in the Bible. Right. And really? I always see that in football games. Yeah, it's, you know, God loved the earth so much he sent his only son. If you believe in him, you won't perish, have eternal life. And it's funny because speaking of fake politicians and all that, it just reminded me of a memory where Bill Clinton, or I think it was George W. Bush, but they went on TV and they're like, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. My favorite verse is John. And he meant, he probably meant to say John <laughs> 16, but what he said was John 16, 3. He, he well, what's it, that one about? Which is hilarious because the irony here is, like he meant to say John six three sixteen, but John sixteen three is actually, and these things they do unto you because they have not known the Father or me. So that's the <laughs> hilarious irony behind that, where he flipped like well, Bill Clinton when I came out. I was like, oh yeah, I'm a Christian. Uh, I love John sixteen three, and that verse literally states, and these things they will do unto you because they have not known the Father or me. Isn't that funny? <laughs> like, I know that's no, I don't want to say ironic, but dude, that is that's just that's funny because it's coming from Bill Clinton's mouth. So it's yeah, just that's like scary. that's scary, right? But no, no, but that's like a scary, scary coincidence. It is, but look it up. He meant to say John three sixteen, but he said John sixteen three. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, and it's it's just that. I mean, 
No, I, but then I get it's not a lesson. Like seriously, <laughs> but then again, this guy. Yeah, but then he's the president, so yeah, God would. I don't know. It's weird. They like. But anyways, the family unit is is extremely important because, like, I will say this: I want to. I don't. We don't. We haven't talked about family too much on this show, and why I want to emphasize is because we've departed from that. And as I get stronger in my faith, also, it's just I realize I come from just an amazing family. Like, I got to give my family. We're not. We're not like top class by any means. You know, we're not like a wealthy family. We're not a powerful family. We're not, we're a big family. My dad's the oldest of seven kids and his dad was the oldest boy of 10 kids. So I have a lot of cousins and all that, but I think about it, you know, I think that, you know, I, I think about legacy. I think about like, you know, there's a lot of these movements on the internet with like MGTOW, men going their own way, men checking out of the dating plays. No one's dating anymore. No one's having relationships. And I'm like, how are you supposed to continue your kind? How are you supposed to make the world better? Your kids have to be better than you. That's how it's going to be. Kids, yeah. to, I mean, kids are going to be better than their parents, right? Except maybe you know, not all baby boomers, but baby boomers probably weren't better than their parents. But that, that's besides the point. But the idea here is, that's an important thing that I think about because you know how we've talked about conservatism for so long? And yeah. You nail on the head when you said, well, how are you going to care for other people if you can't care for some of your own, right? It's it, like, I, I don't know. It's like I, maybe for some Christians, for some conservatives who believe that maybe they're just not called to have a family of their own, they're at least called to be charitable, right? Because if God's calling them the singleness as they believe and they don't want to have a family, cool. But I don't know how you can be a progressive, like an atheist, think about yourself all the time and think that you're actually improving society, think <laughs> how you're making it better. That's why I go back to the feminist movement, right? About, hey, some of these women just, number one, they fulfill a biological need at a certain point because it just clicks. That's why I wanted to remark on that. But then it leads in the family. It leads into the importance. Yeah, they get betrayed. You know, they get betrayed. And, and a lot of, you know, here's the thing, right? We've had the biggest collective i guess influence of feminism in younger kids these days because before it was a bunch of old ladies that were arguing for suffrage see we have, to, we have to remember that right it's not the same because those were all married women who were like hey women should vote and we're like all right sure but now you got women who are just like men are the enemy like men are the actual devil and they're the reason for why we've got all these problems patriarchy is to blame for all this and i'm thinking like like <sighs> How you get? <laughs> how are you gonna improve? How are you gonna have kids? How are you gonna? How is how is our civilization supposed to progress? Okay, so you decide to check would, out entirely. What would the feminists say to that response? Like, what would they say? What do you think the response is? We have to get rid of all straight white men, and then. Well, not just not just that, but they'll say things like, "Oh, all you want to do is entrap us, you know, into your forcing you back into the kitchen, forcing us to." I don't think that's such a bad idea. Women were happier there. Well, no, no but it, it's <laughs> it's I know. no, but no, but even no, but the no, but that, you know that's a myth. Like the whole thing about women's suffrage is a literal yeah, it's a myth. myth. Yeah, because black women didn't have those problems, you know. Again, and like voting, they, and they were voting in the late nineteenth century. Well, not just voting, but they were driving, making money. You know, right. it was it's insane. They they had they had property. They had property and all that. Yeah, you know, and and that's the thing. Like there was women's suffrage for white women because white women weren't really you know well they're all they weren't politically involved see well, that's the thing I, no it's not even about politically involved like because i honestly believe this i honestly believe the reason why blacks were so successful you know coming up from the um you know after slavery was because they had and uh, maybe you know, and those who were all successful in that time, they honestly had a strong belief in Jesus. And that was what made them so successful. There was no women's suffrage for blacks because black women believed in Christ the way I think was intended in the Bible. That's the only time in U.S. history I believe that people had an honest grasp of Christianity other than Asian people right now. 
the yeah. Koreans and Chinese understand Christianity probably in the same manner as that, that black people did. Because look at you, Chinese dude, wanting 10 kids. That's how you're supposed to be. You know what I mean? Blacks used to be like there. that. But now I blacks probably, are like, yeah. oh, I want to play dice. I want to teach my kid how to twerk and, and use a pistol. And, oh, and man. Speaking crazy. of that, dude, I literally saw two ratchet ass. I'm sorry for saying this, but I saw these two girls who literally were playing club thumping music. This was back in San Francisco. And at a stoplight, both of them got out of their cars, like out of the cars at the doors and started twerking on the side of the car while the music was going on <laughs> in the middle of an intersection. And I thought, this is where we've gotten to. This is what yeah, happened. When they don't have strong fathers and they don't got families, they just act crazy. <laughs> no, but it's, you know, and that's like an old joke of Chris Rock. You know, you're, you know, you only got one job as a father. That's to keep your baby off the pole. pole. <laughs> <laughs> and that technically has a double meaning to it, if you think of that. Yeah, no, but that's the thing. It's like, oh, man. I mean, you hate that, to. That's pretty funny, though. See, that's the thing about these old school comedians, too, is that they were right. Even Bill Cosby made some observations that were correct. Like no, but but I'm gonna I'm gonna say this real quick, and that is not being racist. I'm not speaking on behalf of any black people I or anything know. like that. I'm just you got to be honest with what's going on in the streets, what's going on in culture. There is no Bible. There is nobody believing in anything in the black community. It's just the truth. Right. And those people who do believe in God in the black community don't believe in the way that was meant through whatever Jesus was saying in that Bible, because there is science in that Bible. It is undeniable. And when, when blacks actually had a grasp on Christianity, guess what? They were the leaders in science back in the 1800s to the early 1900s. That's an undeniable fact of history. So it's not racist to say when blacks shun away from the word of Jesus, and then, they sh and then guess what? They shun away from family. They shun away from being smart. They shun away from just basic, because science ain't that complicated. You look at something, and just, well, I don't know, for men, when a man looks at something, they go, what the, how does that work? You know what I mean? And like, everybody has that in them. Even you look at a DJ, it's like, how the hell is he doing that stuff with his hands? You know what I mean? Everybody yeah. has it. <laughs> everybody has, it makes you want to go and learn something. But black people, they don't want to learn anything. They sit around and, and everybody wants to be a famous rapper or they want to practice playing basketball or they want to be a YouTube star or something that has nothing to do with honest to God, real science, real economy, real anything. Everything is just some digital bullshit or whatever they see on TV or some get rich scheme. I've, I've yet to seen any young black men that go, you know what? I want to go ahead and learn how to, you know, become an expert in the food and beverage industry so I could become like a GM, pull a couple hundred grand a year working in Vegas somewhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you want to be around hot women and people playing dice, why don't you learn how to do something in that industry and make a couple of hundred grand on a base salary? But you don't see black why? people doing that. And why is that? Because they have turned, I mean, it really does stem from them pushing away God. It, 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 it's that, but that's the thing. People don't understand what economy means. So now what happened, I think this is why everybody has to, uh, why God punishes them and, and makes us all poor. Because when you're poor, then you get to experience other people's charity, other people's kindness. And then right. you see who does it the right way and who does it the wrong way. I never went to a place that there was a long ass food line and, and the media was there and fuck that. You know what I mean? I'm not going to be somebody's poster. You know what I mean? Oh, please help this starving black kid. Oh, this poor boy. Fuck you guys. You know what I mean? I don't want to be anywhere near that. <laughs> yeah, but it's amazing. It's like, no, but it's, it's amazing how people are like, pro. Oh, I'm thinking, why? You should be embarrassed that you need free money to go to school. You know what I mean? Like, just earn it yourself. Earn it on your merits. Don't be, you know, trying to do shit on charity. You know what I mean? It's like, because it's not meant for the poor. 
it's meant for the people who are retarded or too stupid to realize right. that who can't do it themselves who yeah, absolutely or the tv's not talking to you so do you think that learning how to really the importance of the family unit which is practically gone and progressive like i, I bet you you can't even talk about family because here's the thing right you want to know what a common thing is when i was growing up in public schools Everybody what? hating their families. Everybody talking about like, oh, I, don't want to- <laughs> I wonder when why. You went- <laughs> when you went to college, right? Everybody just talked about how crappy my family is. And I'm like, maybe, yeah, we sometimes will complain that we have eccentric, crazy people of our family. But dude, you need your family. Like you do. Like, uh, Yeah, but what's one wrong point, with one- eccentric? I'm no, thinking- no, there's nothing wrong with that. My, I mean, my family's eccentric. They are. They're, they're a little bit wild. But what I will say is this. We have been un- unconsciously taught to abandon our family and to not honor our parents. I'm serious. Yeah, I believe that. It. Yeah. Sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. Bunch That's of why angry. we don't obey. <laughs> kind of like God's children angry. turning away. It's the same deal. You don't honor your parents. If God's your father, like, come on, have some respect here. But No, you- but my thing is like, seriously, what did you guys have to complain about? If As long as you're not homeless or being sexually abused, it, it's... it's uh... There you go. Nothing. That, I, those are the only reasons why you could honestly complain. That's, that's, that's why the greatest generation, like the biggest baby birth rate ever in the 20s, right, came out of that. It was just like, dude, we're just going to have a bunch of kids, you know, industrialization, medis- advances in medicine. This is great. People always like to blame boomers for a lot of problems that we have in our site because they were the first to accept sexual revolution and hippie culture and actually rejecting God. It wasn't us millennials. Like we're, we're brought up by baby boomers, right? Yeah. All baby boomers are horrible, but that was the first active dissolution of family where it wasn't as important anymore. It was. And when people say like, Oh, in the fifties and sixties, yeah. If you were a boomer, you were 10 in 1960, you were five or 10 years old. That's a boomer. But your parents were greatest generation folks, twenties and 30 born. Yeah either pre-depression or post-depression right after World War II and had kids in the 60s. Like, that's how it works. Anyways, I'm deviating, but that's why I think that I want to dive into this further with our talks because it's not just something that's actively encouraged in our faith, but it's like, how is your country, right? How is your society going to progress and become even better? Well, okay, now who is having children? The Christians, honestly. I only see, like, honestly, when I... don't know, like, on a global scale, because in the United States, we're not having kids. That's no, the point. So you're right, Christians are, but, man, they're getting slaughtered left and right all around the world. Yeah, that's But true. around the world... It's the Muslims. Muslims. Yeah. Well, yeah. Muslims. And, and people don't get it. See, because a lot of people don't understand how Muslims are conservative. Also, people don't understand why Muslims, there's, like, a billion muslims in the world you know why because with with islam you're born into it like you you don't accept islam it's like if you're like for example i grew up in a muslim country right yeah if you were born into a muslim country you were automatically islamic you believe in the faith you yeah it's like being a jew yeah it's like being a jew whereas with christianity you could leave and come back whenever you 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 shouldn't but you could technically leave and come back whenever you want to got you know jesus isn't going to be like obey or be killed be cut off from your people that's why yo that's why it's screwed up sometimes with some of those countries because literally in the old testament text it's like if you didn't abide by it you were cut off from your people and they take it literally so you're born into it and people wonder like why are there so many jews or not not so many jews but so many muslims no but check this i'm gonna stop here for a second because i want you to think about this there's about around the world there's about 2 billion Christians. And around the world, there's about 2 billion Muslims. Now, think about the difference between 2 million Jews, I mean, uh, 2 million Christians versus 2 million Muslims. The Muslims were enslaved into that faith. They had no choice. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? You have 2 billion people and growing with that mentality of kill, 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 kill. And then you got 2 billion Christians who believe the exact opposite. And we're not enslaved. It, you don't have to be born. Yeah, you're not, it's all by free will, free choice. And remember, when we t- and I'm glad you brought that up because, man, I was struggling with this for a while about that. And it makes sense to me now, you know, listening to you say that. Because when you have free will, 
Jesus was supposed to, and it goes back to even back to the Nob Hill story. If Jesus was there, what would he do? He would convince you. He wouldn't force you into doing it. He would, he would make you see how it's good for you. That's why so many Asians accept Jesus right now in Asia. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I believe it works because it's working all throughout Asia. That's why Asia is so successful. Right. You know what I mean? But anyway, but the, I don't want to say the problem, but because of the Jews who think a lot like the Muslims, there's a whole lot more people who want war and to kill than a lot more people who want peace. And, and the, that's the, the problem. The Jews and the Muslims are fighting each other in the Middle East. It's not Christian. Yeah, right? but even around the world, it's like, they look, the Jews here in this country want to go to war. They want to go to war with Venezuela. They want to go to war everywhere. They want war. It's just what they want. <laughs> They're making money off of it. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, oh, th and that's why so many Jews but, in this country are liberal. And I can't help you know? but tie it back to the original. This is not a conspiracy. Lord Rothschild literally financed both sides of the wars in World War I. He yeah. He financed both sides because he could make money. Yeah, that, but that's how it's done. Oh, Everybody man. knows this. No, but there was that movie, uh, um, The Lord of War. Yeah. He, he, sold it, he sold arms to both sides. Everybody does because that's what they do. And the American government allowed him to do it because, you know, they had to make their money. They buy the guns, da 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 da, da. It's, it's, a, it's a good movie. <laughs> and, um, yeah, Nicolas Cage. I thought it was good movies. But anyway, um, uh, oh, God. It's like when you really think about, you know, about family and, and Christianity versus Islam or the Jewish religion, it's amazing how the similarities between Jews and, and Muslims are almost identical. They parallel one another. And it, you could break it down to black versus whites. That's all it is. It's just a race war. That's all it is. But the war against Christians is honest to God about ideology. It's an ideological difference of peace, forgiving other people, being charitable to those who honestly need it. And, and I, see, and this is the thing. Um, I think where Christians get confused, can I, this is like a tangent, but the word rebuke. Yeah. What does that really mean? Now, when you look at it from the Merriam-Webster uh, definition, <laughs> all it is is just to criticize sharply. No, you know? no, and because the example that you can't not when when I when I say rebuke, it means to just say that hey, that's not right. This is to correct. It's to reprimand, but not to rep, not to criticize. Criticizing and reprimanding are not the same thing, and people need to understand that. Like when, when you look into the Bible and people say, hey, he rebuked these people. It's just like, hey, you shouldn't be doing this. Correct it. Change your ways. And then you're good. That's what it is. Yeah. Rebuking somebody, ultimately, the reason for that is you want them to repent. That's, that's where it comes from. So you can't just look into the Merriam-Webster dictionary and be like, oh, I criticize. Well, the archaic version. Okay, so this is what it says for archaic. To turn back or keep down. Okay. So an expression of strong disapproval, reprimand. Yeah, reprimand. Yeah, let's look but it means you disapprove. Reprimand. <laughs> but, but, but disapproving, di disapproving, right, and criticizing are not the same thing. If yeah, but I okay. Went but, out, see, but, if okay. I was, if I had kids and I disapproved of like crappy behavior, like yeah, I'm gonna reprimand them. But it doesn't mean criticize. Yeah, okay, now. No, actually, it's a critical sharply. Trust me, when you're reprimanding somebody, it, you got to criticize them sharply because you just can't punish somebody without... Crit See, because criticism isn't bad. Yeah. So you have to criticize somebody before you spank them. You do. Because they have to understand where it's coming from. So, right. but anyway, that's neither here nor there. But people confuse the word rebuke, and I think you defined it very well, uh, it's a reprimand or with the archaic form. That's more biblical. So to reprimand, which is cannot be done without sharply criticizing before you do, because they have to understand where it's coming from. 
there's a big difference from that and condemnation. See, people confuse condemnation with rebuking. And that's a big, because like everybody wants to condemn gays so quickly. All you got to do is rebuke them. You don't need to condemn them because you're not a judge. You don't know. Like, honestly, we all do not know if gays are going to hell for being gay. We don't know. You know what I mean? Like, let's pretend there's no Jesus. It's not on the 10 sins or the 10 commandments. Thou shall not be gay. You know what I mean? It doesn't well, say thou shalt not commit it, it, it sodomy. Does, it does say that in, in Romans and Leviticus. Yeah, no, but that's what I'm saying. We got to take Jesus out of the equation. Okay. If Jesus is not there, if you're a Jew or a Muslim who does not believe in Jesus, you, they kill Jews. I mean, not Jews. They kill, they kill fags. They do. Why? It's not in the Ten Commandments. It, it just doesn't, you know, why are you going to kill a gay dude? It's not part of the Ten Commandments. So that's the thing. It's like people confuse a, a good rebuking with condemnation. Right. And they are so quick to kill. It's not funny. Which probably goes back to abortions. We are so quick to abort so a baby. One thing I will say funny. is this. The, the important distinction I want to make, too, is that the, the Bible says that if a man lieth with another man, it is an abomination. They've committed an act of an abomination against God and they shall be put to death. But I will say this because people say, Hey, the Bible doesn't talk about killing gay people. It doesn't say you kill gay people. It's that's the consequence, right? However, yeah. in the Quran, it's condemnation as opposed to rebuking. Yeah, you know I know. I mean? That's what's crazy. That's, like that's the difference. Because here's the thing: when people say, "Oh, well, the Bible doesn't condemn homosexuality as an act," yes, it does. It does. I, yeah. I just got to say it plain and simple. But when you treat people who are living in sin, because it says this in Romans, right? Fornicators, effeminates. It, literally, in the King James yeah. Bible says effeminates, homosexuals. Right? They're not going to inherit the kingdom. <coughs> and such were some of you, but you were saved by grace, saved by Jesus. So you're fine. That's the difference here is that, okay, you were a sodomite or I don't, I hate no, no, but, but here's the but, thing. No, but think about this. See, I believe, well, it's not, I believe, I don't believe in anything, but from what I read, I understand it to be that there's 10 laws that humans can punish other humans for the 10 commandments. But God literally wiped out the entire city of Sodomites. <laughs> he did. That's what God did. You, you know God killed everybody in that city, right? Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah. Yeah, like he literally wiped them all out. I'm thinking, holy shit. You know what I mean? But that's crazy. Fire rained down from heaven. And no, but see, them. but that's the point. See, it's up to God to do it, not man. Man is only to punish the Ten Commandment types, and then that's God is right. going to See, but it's, I hate to say things like this, but... STDs is God's way of killing everybody. It's kind of like fire when you get STD or some kind of weird cancer. When you go to the therapy and it doesn't even work, it's like your body's on fire. It's a weird thing. I mean, I've never had these diseases, but everybody always says, oh, oh, my body's burning. I'm thinking, really? Yeah. Holy shit, that's crazy. And like in hindsight, thinking about how the city burnt down, I'm thinking, holy crap. And these medications are like burning everybody to death. It, I mean, but they still live, but it's like, wow, what a punishment. And uh, it, it, there's some reasonable symmetry here if you think about yeah, it. Yeah, no, right? but that's like the parallels are, it's just uncanny. It's like, wow, <laughs> this is like the greatest coincidence of all time or coincidence Man, god is real it's like shit. no after after the end of this i'm gonna share with you one more coincidence but it'll be funny yeah you know off air off air i want to i want to know no, but but we do have to we do have to wrap up the show a little bit here because you know i want people to really absorb this but back to the family unit right back to how we live our lives i do you like i just think that most because I kind of started this off with the foot of women and wanting to have babies from a biological standpoint, and now it's drifted into other things. But I have a, I have a. No, it's all connected. Trust me. It's all connected. It's all but I have connected. a, I have a feeling that that's just the thing: is our biological instinct and imperative takes over. Because we talk about conservatism as like that's biologically the best way to live, especially if it pertains to not just you but others around you as well, right? If you want to live in yeah. harmony with people. You need families. You need to take care of the people who can't take care of themselves. And I have a feeling that a lot of these so-called crazy 
Marxist feminists are going to go crazy in about five or 10 more years. Cause that's when they hit, the, like that's when all of them in my generation hit that age where it's just like, you got, you, you, you got betrayed. You were fed a lie. And <laughs> well, you know, I've heard a lot of people saying this recently that, uh, it's and happening already. Also this from like the the, the infowar guys, you know, they're all saying that conservatism is the new counterculture because conservatives are being kicked off of all of social media and all this other stuff, and and now like wanting a you know family and and, and being like conservative values is what's cool now because they're figuring out that getting fucked in the ass ain't cool. It hurts. It brings diseases, makes you shit funny. You know what I mean? And, and, and like guys and girls are doing this. So, and they're learning that, hey, look, all of the sexuality isn't maybe not that great because when you see everybody in these filters of Instagram, because, you know, I, I uh, it's not cool anymore. And we know, well, it. I, no, but you know, no, but like seriously, I went on these, all these crazy websites like Tinder and, and, you know, cause I, you, just to see what everybody's doing on uh, Instagram. What, what other ones? Ashley Madison. Oh God. Like there was this. Okay. So like this Wait, Ashley Madison, that's a porn site, dude. No, no, no. Ashley Madison is a website. It's a dating website for married people to date other married people. <laughs> and, uh, You're kidding me. Yeah, no, so, but, it's, but it ties into this family stuff, right? So this one woman. Oh, yeah, you're right. Ashley Madison is the affair website. Sorry, I don't know why. I yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, so, so, yeah, but this one woman, she... Uh, Literally, the motto is, life is short, have an affair. Really? <laughs> I got to go back on it because like, but, say, but tell your story. I didn't mean to. No, but anyway, so like, it, no, it's just like, cause I've been doing research, like why women do these kind of things, you know what I mean? And, and about family and all this other stuff. Like why, you know, like what you said, how come women don't want kids, but then yet they want kids eventually. So, but it was this weird thing, like all these women craving like, okay. So this one, um, this one girl, she, uh, she wanted all these things and, um, because they had so many kids, like her and her husband just really didn't have any spark left. And, uh, and so anyway, so she went on that website try, trying to find somebody and, uh, you know, so she wasted like all this time you know, emailing back and forth to somebody and, and all this other stuff. But because he's married, he couldn't meet her at a certain time. And uh, anyway, so he just, he flaked on her after all that time. So then she tried it again with another guy. And uh, so when they met, they met, you know, then they kissed and she was shocked that he kissed her right away. <laughs> so when they planned to have sex, he never showed up. And then she was like, I can't even have an affair, right? And now she's all twisting her head because she doesn't know how to have an affair and, and all this other stuff because... You know, but it stems from her photos being photoshopped. You know what I mean? And because everything was photoshopped, they don't know how to live in an unfiltered world. Like they don't wreck like because yeah. when a guy sees a woman, they don't know that she has pores on her face. You know what I mean? And yeah. some of these chicks, they they sport a little bit of a mustache or you know. Yeah, what we're basically saying is, for a lot of us young folks who are in tune with this, it's it's the makeup test. It's like makeup is an incredible thing. Yeah, it's like that dude in China suing his wife for being ugly after all of those because the kids were ugly, and she even though she had all those surges to be beautiful, and the dude won. <laughs> the dude won yeah, in court. I saw that. I was like, dang, this is some real stuff. Well, that's the thing. It's like people do not know how to live in an unfiltered world. Like they don't know what people honestly look like. Yeah. Seriously. Like, you know, people trip out on this and people trip out on that. It's like, you know what? I'm supposed to have these scars. I'm supposed to have, you know, folliculitis. I'm black, man. What do you think happens? You yeah. know, like we get folliculitis. It's just one of them things. And, uh, I anyway, but that's the thing, like people, but then when, when you see a black guy on TV or on Instagram, they use that app that takes away the folliculitis on the neck. You yeah. know what I mean? And, and it's like, ooh, you got the smoothest skin like a baby. It's like, we, we don't, come on now. You know what I mean? <laughs> we don't look like this. And, and, and the thing is, when you have big, big families, your family members will keep each other in check. I guarantee you, the bigger the family, 
the less stupidity people have and like the less influence. Yeah, of, that, that's an interesting you got thought. A brother, you have a sister who's going to put you in check. Oh, yeah. And that's what gangs do. Yeah, they, that's why, they you, that's why you need brothers and siblings to not only keep each other in check, but while you're growing up, you have to wrestle. You have to fight your brother. It, it's, it's a rite of passage of keeping you in check. Because only kids, like only children, some of them have to learn how to share later on in life. It's like, dude, you don't know what it's like. I fought my brother for 10 years. And, and that's part of it. You're supposed to. You're supposed to wrestle with your brother. You're yeah. Supposed to act, you're supposed to take that stuff out on, on your siblings, right? Because then when they grow up, they're just like, oh, yeah, well, that's part of it. He was the grown-up one. So all the parents, like, here's the thing. He's allowed to, like, casually, you're allowed to pick on your siblings because you're the oldest. But when it comes to the punishment, you get the brunt of it. See, there's a there's a reasonable balance here. It's That's like, right. and, and then the younger kids get spoiled more. It's just how it works. But. That's how it just. That's just how the the natural dynamic of a family unit functions. And and here's the thing, nobody really complains about being the oldest at the end of the day, especially if you fulfill your role. It's like, nah, that's just how it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. No. No. You're right. No. No. What no. You're right, teach, man. Right. You can't. And you can't <laughs> teach kids. People who grow up in big stable families and are still connected with their families a hundred percent i guarantee you they're not for socialism because you know what it's like yeah. to have it unfair have it not handed to you oh your little sibling gets away with something you didn't it's not a capitalist punishment oh well you got something you didn't deserve well it's because it's the norm here see that that's what a way to teach kids right about how family works how hard work works especially if you instill with them good values and like you know you're trying to build an army here you i guarantee you these kids are not going to grow up and become socialists if you do it right i guarantee it like no no see and we grew up in works. a broken home no no but it's true but even yeah. even like but even in bigger families people tend to all be conservative like in my family we we're a broken family uh you know divorced parents whatever it is um so out of the six of us, four of us are conservative and two, well, one, I, I don't know if he's, I think he's more like in the middle. Like he's like halfway conservative, halfway social. But the youngest one is somewhat of a socialist, although she is changing now and she's getting more into like, you know, she has her own little shop now and, and things like that. So she gets it. You know what I mean? But yeah. before before she had her kids and everything else, she was hardcore, like, socialist and things but like see, that. But This is beautiful how it fits. So yeah. That's why. Yeah. You know? That's how it works. It's, it's not just that conservatism is a political ideology. It's how we're built. It's how we conduct our business, not just with people. It's also how we run our families, how we lead to the betterment of our kind. I'm no, but think about this. Yeah. Can you imagine having a family where the oldest had to provide for everybody, for all the other of, siblings? A lot of immigrant families are like that. No, like, but no, but no, but think about that. It, it, it's 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 no, but like everybody pitches in. Yeah. Oh, man. It, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, it says uh, it's something flash. This is internet connections unstable. Oh, it's right. I don't know what that meant. But anyway, so no, but think because like. I can't imagine, like, I see immigrant families, everybody pitches in, you know what I mean? But, yeah. you know, but I know the oldest, oldest sibling usually does the most of the work because they're the oldest, but everybody has to pitch in, everybody. Yeah. So, but I can't imagine a family where just one guy works and the others just live off of his work. You know what I mean? Like, I can't imagine that. I, I, I mean, just it couldn't does happen, imagine. But it's not conducive to a stable family unit. There's going to be some strife if that were the case. Until, exactly. Until, until it gets fixed. And yeah, and, fixed, and, that's, and that's why conservative philosophy is the only way to make things work. Anything else, it just won't work. It, it's just, it's not even an opinion. It's a, it's, it's a fact it's a based fact. on tons and tons of evidence and, and, and mathematical equations because it's just how it works. It's because what it happens works. when the oldest brother dies, then what? Everything ends. Everybody needs to create their own money, their own wealth. Da, 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 da. It's, it's just, it's an amazing fact. But see, but that, that's that's the amazing to... thing is that back to the carnal mind, especially as it pertains to progressivism, conservatism is not just about that. 
it's also foresight, which apparently progressives lack. They don't have foresight. <laughs> but it's true. That's it's true. Like I'm going to live for today. I'm just going to, you know, bang a bunch of broads and think it's okay. Yeah. You're an idiot. Because think about this. Like, what if it, you know what I mean? Like, even Gene Simmons was like, man, you know, I probably shouldn't have banged all those women. You know, like, like Charlie Sheen's the same way. It's like, and he's got HIV. Like, you know. Oh, God. I know, no, but. Yeah, like, like you see what I'm saying? It's like yeah, you don't have no, foresight right. when you're a progressive. You just don't have foresight. That's why some of these ladies are feminist cat ladies at 50 and all that. It's just like because you don't have foresight. If you knew this and you were aware of it and you actually were a smart person, I guarantee you you would have thought a little bit differently about your future. Conservatives yep. don't just think about the present day. They think about the best possible outcome in, into the future as well. Think about it, right? It's just like... It's, it's your, your most important biological function, which is having children. I guarantee you, you got to plan for that. You got to think about it. Even You have to at least have the thoughts cross your mind. And that's what sets us apart. That's why conservatives value the family and the progressives don't. Because they don't necessarily live for the future. They live for the present day. So you're given all this carnal stuff. And it's just like, yeah, your orgasm lasted all of five seconds. And then after that, you're lazy for the rest of the day. You don't want to work. You just want to take a nap. No wonder you're the same. Yeah. Place. Hey, no, no kidding, man. I'm telling you now, see, that is spot on. That is spot on. No, because that's like, you know, do I regret? See, because like, God, I hate to say things like this, but that's what made me so successful is my ability to get other people laid. That was like my currency. Seriously. If I was getting people laid, I had a place to stay for as long as I wanted. <laughs> That's how it works. So if I was banging the broad, I could stay there for free and live there for as long as I wanted. But uh, I, I, th I found it. I found it more. Um, how do I say this tastefully? Anyway, it was just better for my economic situation to get dudes laid. <laughs> you know, it was just how it is. You know. But anyway, yeah. So family. That's a I'm good way to end it. it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening, guys, to the American Maiden Page Show. I really appreciate you guys tuning in, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.